Midland, Texas, uh, 3802 uh, Fair Circle, uh, the home of 10,000 felonies. Uh, if you've been following the story, a, a lot of you have seen me talk about this before, and it, it, it's one of the possible motives for murder, and, and asking the question if a landman attorney here in Midland named Matt Hyman uh, got himself killed inside my house two weeks before the murder attempt on my life. And, and so I've wrote, I've written about that, but I've never made a video and I've never really went through everything uh, and, and showed you what was going on that night. And, and really to back up, uh, you have to remember 14 months before that happened, before the murder attempt, uh, was my first call f to the police for a felony burglary. You know, I noticed somebody in my house, not in my attic, you know, not in tunnel, nothing. They were inside my home. And, in in, you know, it was somebody broke into my home. It's a felony. They could go to prison for 10 years for that. Okay. And so, uh, and then it continued on. And then my second call in January 2011, I heard somebody in the attic and it's continued and we're still going on. I, you know, I was shot with attic, uh, burglar alarms going off in my attic. Well, one of the things that, uh, that I, uh, you know, it very frustrating, this house is what home was rigged with hidden access. And then it's been used for, for this theft, theft of services, because they're still in heating, cooling, uh, shelter, electricity, etc. from me. They're terrorizing me. They're threatening my life. They're spying on me. They're committing hundreds and thousands of felonies, you know. And, and, and they do that because they have that secret police gang that helps them murder people. OK, basically, you know, that looks the other way while they commit all these crimes with video after video after video of proof that, that, that they're going on and other people's statements of underground facility and, and all that. Well, anyways, uh, you know, and I'm sitting here and, and trying to I just want to live in peace. You know, that's all I wanted to do. I, I mean, I just I, you know, I, I don't want crime uh, committed against me. I want I want them to stop. Go away. Go mess with somebody else, whatever, you know, but one of the ideas that I got was to, uh, to get some tear gas, okay, I found a product called Clear Out, and they're tear gas canisters, the canisters are small little, small little canisters, and, and, you know, it's like the, what you buy at the store, the mace or whatever, and, and, and it's used to, uh, remove people from enclosed spaces. Well, that's exactly what I got. I got an enclosed space up there. And, and so uh, I ordered some off the internet. And, and the first time I set it off, me and the ex-wife did. She, there was two attic doors in this house. She was on one attic door. I'm on the other attic door. And, uh, and I yelled up there, I'm fixing to tear gas attic, you know, because I don't want to hurt anybody. And, and, you know, we punch the button on the cans, and then they, it, it goes off kind of like bug spray, whatever. And you throw them up in there, you know. And then we met in the backyard, and we're crying and, and coughing and gagging. And that was just from punching the button and throwing them in the attic, you know. That, that's how that stuff, I mean, you really really don't even want to be around, you know, this stuff when it goes off because that's what it does. It takes your breath away, okay, and you can't see, you know, and so uh, basically nothing happened, you know, and I think I might have even accused her of notifying somebody that was, you know, because uh, I didn't I didn't trust her at that time, and uh, and, and I thought maybe she was uh, connected with crimes, and, and I, st I still believe that, and and so, uh, well, I haven't had people tell me she's involved in the murder attempt, you know, but either way, that was the first time we used tear gas, okay, and and then and then another time I I, I had put I installed burglar alarms in my attic. Why would anybody do that? So I could prove to everybody this is going on, you know. And literally, if you put a you put some burglar system in your attic, it should never go off for thirty years, right? And I've had every kind of I've had multiple different systems. Every single one of them gone off. Motion lights have gone off. People been here. It don't matter how much evidence it is. This is way, way, way past the level of oh, you need evidence. It's just the level of absurdity on the amount of crimes that is going on here. And so uh, another time the burglar alarm set off a burglar alarm and, and she was here and I said, I'm going to set off the tear gas. And I set it off, you know, I can hear them scrambling around, you know, and, and, but it still didn't stop. And so then I'm only married three months. Okay. And we separate around December the 30th at the end of the year, right at New Year's 2011 going into 2012. I'm shot less than a month later. Okay. And, and so as soon as she's gone, because she moves, you know, she moves out, and then comes a couple weeks later, comes back, and we load her stuff up, and then she's gone. But uh, 
I was determined I'm stopping these crimes. You know, once again, I just want to, I just want to live crime free. I, I mean, that's it. You know, I'm tired. I was, I was sick and tired of, I'm, I'm more sick and tired of it now that I'm seven years going into this, you know? And, and so I, I you know, I had a plan that, uh, I, I, I knew they were sleeping here, the people breaking into my home. And, and so I went to bed and I pretended to go to sleep and I waited until I thought maybe they were asleep. Okay, and then I jumped up and I ran to the other side of the house, which is the uh, breaker box. I killed all the power on the house. And the reason I did that is because uh, they're still in electricity from me. They're still in light from me. I wanted to put them in the dark. Okay, and they're in, now they're in an attic in the dark, you know, and, and you know, it's trying to steal my electricity that, that, you know, took that away from them. And then I had already had it set up. I had three cans of that tear gas through my house. I drilled little holes. They had tubes on them. I drilled holes through the ceiling and had the tube up there and I had it ready to go. And, and so all I had to do is punch the button and come over here, punch the button, punch the button. So then that the tear gas was coming down from here, going up there through a little hole. Okay. And, uh, and, and, and I could hear them scrambling around. It wasn't no little bitty bump, you know, like I hear all the time, or them moving around, falling, dropping their gun stuff, like they like normal, you know. I mean, they are panicked. You can hear them, boom, 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 boom. They're trying to get out of there, you know what I mean? And it's a, it would be a terrible place to be. I'd hate to be in an attic with tear gas going off. And that's what happened that night. And so, so I knew I had them good, you know. And then I, I, I went to work the next day, and I come in at lunchtime, and so I come in my front door, and I hear a person moving across the top of my ceiling across the attic there, and, and her coughing, okay? And it didn't work, because what I wanted them to do was leave, you know? that I, I mean, I'm not wanting to kill anybody. There's many people around, you know, they're threatening my life. They've already shot me, you know, and, it, and you have every right in the world to protect your life and protect your property in Texas, but I truly don't want to kill anybody. I want, to, I want the crimes to stop, arrest the criminals in this, you know? And uh, and what I figured out at that time, it, it, it wasn't going to stop them. I, I got them good, that tear gas. And I knew at that time that if I went and I, I go, let me get 10 cans of tear gas, then then nobody walks out. It's done. It's finished, you know. But but then, like I said, then we're going to have some dead criminals. And, uh, and I wasn't wanting to kill anybody. So I figured out a long time ago, I don't have to shoot anybody, okay, to stop these crimes against me. Long time ago. I was worried about retribution, okay, because I had tear gas them in this attic, you know, and of course at that time I'd have been reporting it to the police, to the Texas Rangers, to the FBI, to my family and friends and co-workers, you know, and and, uh, and, and gathering evidence. I didn't have near the evidence I do now, but, but even back then I did. And so uh, um, here was Saturday, and it's January 14th. Okay, and once again, she's gone, so I'm I'm by here by myself in my home, and 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 I'm very concerned that that there might be some retribution because I tear gas the attic. Okay, because that they didn't, you know, they didn't move on to some other home and terrorize and steal from somebody else. You know, these are relentless career criminals that are not ever going to be stopped until they're arrested. You know, I'm telling you, I, I know that for a fact. Okay, and so here I am in my bedroom. This is my bedroom, and I hear the door here. And I don't know if you can see it, which doesn't really matter, but uh, the the spring inside the door, I hear ding, and what is happening is this door knob is turning like that. There's somebody on the other side over here turning this door knob. I mean, it freaked me out. Boy, boom, I come over here and, and, and going to secure that door because they're coming to my room. And I, I, I was real concerned that they were going to kick the door in and then come at me and kill me, okay? I went, even at that time, I knew that uh, the first day I looked at this home, I got a picture of the back door, okay? And and it was fine. And then 28 days later, I'm at the home inspector here, and we found the hole where the back door was. Somebody had kicked in the door, okay, to brute force enter this house. And in that 28 days, Mike Lawhon, the previous homeowner, had died. So as far as I'm concerned, that these people, that the probably the same ones on the other side of this door, kicked in his door and come after him, held him down, injected him with a, with a lethal dose of the Darvocet or whatever it was, that drug, and, and, and overdosed him, okay? And and then I believe they took him to Fort Worth based on the evidence, and and and, uh, and, he, and of course that was, that was murder, and, and uh, had a neighbor as a witness that said he died here, and, and you know that whole story on Mike Lawhon. But anyway, what I was concerned is they're going to kick the door in. 
Okay, that was my concern. Is they're gonna they're gonna come out there? These are killers. I fully believe that. I know that. I got shot two weeks after that fact. I happen to have an extension cord in the closet here. Okay, so uh, so I'm sitting there, and, and God, you know, is taking care of me. I give him all the praise and glory. The incredible idea. You know, I, it, here's the extension cord. I'm thinking. I'll build a safe room, okay? And because I'm worried about them kicking in this door. And so I'd, I'd get my knife boy and I strip the end of it off. I used to be an electrician. Boom, boom. I know the black one's the hot wire, right? And so I'd, I strip that black wire. Boom, I've got copper wire right here. I take that copper wire and I wrap it around this doorknob right here and I plug it in, okay? They're on the other side of the door. Can you look at there and see any electricity on that doorknob? No, you can't. No, you can't. And, and, uh, and so... All night I could hear them. They made lots of noise this night on December 14th, but nobody came in through that door. And, uh, and, and so I, I, I truly believe that saved my life, you know. And, and then the next week, that's when the ex comes over, and, 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 and she had them divorce papers and had the, uh, uh, the return my life insurance booklets, and I always write on that. But as soon as she walks in, she says, uh, how you been sleeping? You know, she knew about this night. She knew I was up all night, them trying to get inside that door that night. And as far as I'm concerned. And so uh, I said, like a baby, you know. But anyways, uh, that's what happened. So later, here, two weeks later, I get shot. There's no doubt. You look at the evidence, it's premeditated murder, you know. They cut my phone lines. They shot me from inches away, directly at an artery, listened to me scream for help, waiting for me to die. That, you know, my life insurance booklets were taken. This was premeditated murder, okay. But after, after I get to the hospital and all that, I remember back to that night two weeks before. And I'm thinking, I wonder if anybody grabbed a doorknob. Because if somebody is on the other side and they grab that doorknob, right, they did, right? And you know what it do? It stop your heart. Because that's what electricity does. It stop your heart. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm looking through the obituaries and I find a guy named Matt Hyman, okay? And, uh, and, and it tells me there in his obituary, he, he, he used to be a landman and then he was an attorney. And that was interesting because landmans are some of my top suspects. They're who I suspect to be involved with oil show parties. And I think the oil show party has been going on in this underground facility, right? And that they were involved in the murder of that young girl and all that stuff, okay? And then, and, and then he's now attorney. And I remember my attorney telling me when I went to see her, she says, there's not a, there's not a lawyer in this town that's going to help you. What? You know, I'm, I mean, I'm like the ultimate victim here. You know, I'm the guy that comes to town, volunteers to lead the United Way drive. These criminals come to my home, attack me, shot me, tried to cut my leg off. You know, they, I mean, they, these are evil killers are what they are. You know, and I believe they've got a whole list of people they killed and nobody's going to help me. No attorney. What if it was because an attorney got killed? So Matt Hyman's 33 years old and... Uh, and I post out there on the internet, you know, this, this I did. Did Matt Hyman get killed in my home? Okay. And, you know, if you think that out, there was more people here. I could tell more than one person, you know, him and his friends or somebody and their friends. If, if their friend on the other side of the door grabbed that doorknob, boom, 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 and they die, you can't call the cops because you're breaking the home to murder somebody. You know what I mean? You go to prison, if you were his friend standing right there, and he dies inside a private home trying to murder the homeowner, you're going to go, you're going you're gonna to get, you're going to be charged with murder for your friend's death because you're with him, okay? I mean, I mean that's, that's how it works. So they can't say that, right? It, that'd be obvious. You know, so they're going to have to come up with some other, some other reason, some other excuse to explain why this 33-year-old man that, you know, land, uh, land man attorney died, right? And so here I'm, I get on Facebook, I post this question. I have the right to ask questions. Somebody tried to kill me, you know? I didn't make a statement. I don't know that. I, I have the right to ask questions. Did he die in this house, right? His sister-in-law, former sister-in-law, was my nurse, okay? And she's on my Facebook friends list. And she goes, well, that, that's my brother-in-law, whatever, you know? And, and so I'm thinking, well... I'm going to ask her some questions and I can eliminate him because I, you know, cause I didn't know, you know? So, so one of my questions was, how did he die? Cause if he died of a, a car accident, it wasn't him. Okay. And done court, done deal. We know it wasn't him. You know, uh, if he died of cancer, wasn't him. Right. You know, no, it wasn't him. You know, I said, what did he die of? Oh, heart failure. Nobody knew he had it. Heart stopped. 33 years old. Heart stopped. Yeah. 
Well, <laughs> that's what happened if you, you get electrocuted, heart to heart stop. And then I'm thinking, what time did he die? If he died in the morning, then it wasn't him because this was this was an afternoon evening, okay? And uh, and once again, oh no, it was that evening. He was just home by himself with his wife, and then he died, you know. And and uh, and so the the only witness you got. So whatsoever that didn't eliminate that whatever to me it did, you know. And I mean it 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 just uh, more confirmed the possibility for sure. And so I posted on there, and then a couple of his friends, this guy named Brian Hillman and Chris Mertz, threatened me, okay? And and I used to work with Chris Mertz. He was a land man for my company, okay? And and another thing, Chris Mertz is calling me crazy. Well, that's, you know, 11 secret police sneaking in your home stealing evidence is crazy, but it's sure clear that I'm not, you know? I mean, that, that we can pretty much be sure of that at that point because that doesn't happen, you know? They didn't accidentally forget to put their name down. There was 11 of them. They sneaked into the home, stole evidence that I told them about. That's what happened. And so, so there's a red flag already on Chris Mertz, you know. And then Brian Hillman threatens to sue me. And he, could, he contacted me on, um, on private message. It was very, very rude and, and ended up getting, getting blocked on that. So anyway, I'm going to show you stuff on the, on the computer here to back this up. Okay, what, what I'm showing here is the clear out. And, and it's got the tube on it, the canisters I was telling you about. And when I went into court on December 18, 2013, you got to remember that that, that ex-wife filed a protective order on me 18 months after the murder attempt. And uh, and I hadn't seen or talked to her in a year and a half. And uh, uh, and she lived 100 miles away. And I, I'd only sent two emails and I get a protective order. And But really it was... It, you know, it was a mockery of justice as far as I'm concerned. The, our, the key witness was secret police Rosa Rodriguez. They both testified that, that I was delusional. And, and that fulfilled the extortion threat that I had recorded on camera. Uh, uh, as if y'all remember that, you know, where she threatened to uh, tell everybody I was crazy if I didn't pay that $1,200 to $1,800 a month. That happened four months before the murder attempt. Anyway, so this is transcript of it, and, and I'm asked in court, do you ever have any big cans of tear gas so we have to talk about it? And then it was brought up in, in the court because what they're trying to do is show, oh, he's crazy, right? He thinks people are breaking into his home, right? And people are breaking into my home, you know, with lots and lots and lots of evidence. And so that's what it looks like. And like I said, uh, you know, you don't need guns, okay? Here's the obituary for Matt, uh, Matthew Don Hyman, 33 Midland. I ain't saying he was here in my house trying to kill me. I ain't saying he died in my house. I was asking the question, did he? Okay, what I found out, he was a petroleum landman with Choate or Chote or whatever. And after passing the bar exam, uh, bar exam, he went to work for Cotton, Bledsoe, Ty, and Dawson as an attorney in the oil and gas section. That's the city's uh, a personal law firm, is who that is. It's, it's Cotton, Bledsoe, Ty, and Dawson. And so, so, and, and then, um, uh, as I said, he died of an unknown heart failure. This is a screenshot of the communications with uh, his former sister-in-law, Natalie Sherry Hyman here. Uh, he died from a genetic heart defect that no one knew he had, you know. Huh, that was interesting. I said, was he messing with electricity that day? I said, it only takes 100 milliamps to stop the heart, right? Oh, no, no, he wouldn't, you know. And, uh, and so, et cetera, et cetera. I said, do you remember the time of death? You know, uh, I, I don't. It was at night. Okay, so once again, that, that was just more... Uh, confirm that theory, you know, and then so I asked this question on Facebook, and 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 as I said, uh, you know, I did, I have the right to ask questions uh, since you know I survived a murder attempt. Okay, so this Brian Hillman guy, who I think's a land man, ain't that interesting? Okay, you're barking up the wrong tree. He sent me a private message, and and here this Maria. Uh, she's like, are they always threatening you like this, buddy? Because she can read it. You know, outside people can read what's saying. And then here's Chris Mertz over here. And uh, I, I worked with you from day you're shot. And, and he basically threatens here. As far as I'm concerned, it was a subtle threat to beat me up. You know, a crippled guy, you know. And uh, uh, and so, I, you know, I, I would I would be asking Brian Hillman and Chris Mertz what they know about a capital attempted murder and finding out where, where they were on January 28, 2012, where they were during the uh, 2010 all show parties in the evenings. OK. And uh, OK, then Hillman. He posts, he, he private messages me, you know. He says, Matt Hyman's not your guy. This is my wife's late husband. So he married the widow, okay. 
And, uh, and I assure you nothing happened. I suggest you taking this down before I pursue legal action. You know, and so, so I have to ask him before I ask a question is what he's telling me. You know, that, that, uh, that, you know, uh, that he's the person that, that you need to talk to before you ask a question on Facebook or he's going to sue you. You know, that's how absurd and ridiculous that is. Okay. And, and so it goes on and I'm being kind and nice and going, Hey, they murdered this girl at the whole show. Do you know anything about that? And I'm not interested in your rhetoric bullshit. I'm interested in you taking this stuff down. This guy's exceptionally rude, right? And I'm, you know, and I'm just telling him, you know, what's going on here. You know, here I'm a survivor of a capital attempted murder. And then I ask him, where were you at on January 28, 2012? I don't know. So there's that one. Okay. And, and, and then, as I was saying, the reason I put electricity on the doorknob is because when I first looked at this home on October 1st, 2008, with my realtor, Janine Pruitt, that's her, this door, I took a picture, and I happened to get a picture of the door, and it's fine. But here with the home inspector on January, or on, um, what, what did I say, October 28, 2008, right here, uh, we found a hole there in the door. Basically, the doorknob was gone. Somebody kicked the door in. And and in that time, on the 12th, Mike Lahan died. And interesting, in the old show, 2008 old show, started the week after that that Mike Lahan dies, you know? And, and we've seen that before that... that uh, uh, I'm going to show you right here. This is the previous homeowner. The death certificate shows him dying at his mom's house in Fort Worth, okay, of acute proxifene intoxication, what is Darvis said, I think, okay? And, uh, and, but, and, and then the Odessa American posted a death notice on the 14th. He died on the 12th, saying he died in Fort Worth, and then they changed it. That's not, somebody has to physically do that and repost it on the 18th and said he died at his residence, you know? So here you're looking, you're going, uh, why would they make that change there? And I think the answer is uh, the neighbor lived directly across the street told me twice that Mike died in this house. And one time she said, I should know, right? And I think that's the reason they changed it because there was witnesses and people knew Mike died in this house, you know? And I think maybe it happened when they kicked that door in. And that's why I put electricity on my doorknob and uh, trying to build a safe room. And then I ran across this in an email today uh, because I was looking at the... Uh, uh, Oh, in my earlier story about internal affairs, Craig Matthews, and I was going through my emails, and I run across this email to myself back in Christmas 2012, <clears throat> and I say, on another tidbit, while in the emergency room, Rosa Rodriguez, that's the detective and secret police, asked me if I had electricity on the tie wires that I used to secure the, the cabinet doors. I found this to be an unusual question unless she happened to know about the home invasion attempt occurring a few weeks prior, which was January 14th, of which I had put electricity on my doorknob to my room after I noticed that somebody was trying to come into my room. And that was the day that Matt Hyman died on the same exact day. And so uh, the question is still out there. So there's one of possible motives for murder besides, you know, multiple people telling me there's an underground facility and, and then my life insurance booklet's been taken. This is Buddy Webb, Midland, Texas. Y'all share this.